heard, but today is the monthly free day. Everyone has the day off today, which makes it the perfect time to do some investigating. It's been a while since we last talked. Have you been making any progress lately? Let's meet at our usual spot in the factory area before lunchtime. I have new information. Ooh, today's our lucky day. We have the day off. From the sound of it, Lenny's been making progress with his investigation. Wonder what he's discovered. Hmm, we still have some time before we meet up. Let's talk with the people here for a bit more before we go. Look, there are some people talking over there. Let's listen in on the conversation. If you ask me, those pompous parasites on the surface act like they're all a bunch of aristocrats. Do any of them give half a hoot about a bunch of dogs like us? Hey, speak for yourself, mate! I'm no dog! Oh, you think you're special or something? If you're here, then you're just a convict like the rest of us. I've heard that even if you're released after serving your sentence, going back to life on the surface ain't any better. Once a criminal, always a criminal. We're marked for life. Uh, I don't buy that. Hey, how cool would it be if the whole world was destroyed by a giant flood and everyone had to start over from nothing? What kind of filthy bilge water are you spewing? I have family up there. You best shut your sewer hole with talk like that. Listen, things ain't so great on the surface, but who says that you have to leave? I've heard that you can still stay here and work even after you've served your sentence. Not bad if you ask me. Who wants to live in the ruddy overworld anyway? <laughs> and what makes you think they'd want to hire someone like you? <laughs> it's one of the great mysteries of the universe, how someone as useless as you is so confident. Whoa! Sounds like they're really unhappy about the overworld. Speaking of which, Paimon never heard anyone use the words overworld or underworld when we were living up there. Is it only something the inmates down here say? That's true. There's a group of people over there. Let's go listen in. So I said, that's not a faucet. Hey, hey, who are you two? Why'd you come over all of a sudden? Oh, uh, sorry for eavesdropping. Sounds like you were talking about something private. Uh, what's the matter? <laughs> They're just looking to join in on our fun, that's all. Hey, don't pretend like it's okay for them to just interrupt us like that. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. You're lucky we don't mind extroverts that much. <laughs> you hear that, Quisto? What nice! Your expressions tell me you're looking to hear some juicy info, am I right? <laughs> but before that, it just so happens that I know you two. Really? Are we that famous? You're kidding. How often does anyone get a personal tour led by His Grace himself? Practically everyone was talking about it. Word has it that you also caused quite the kerfuffle. A little mistake, huh? I like the way you put it. You see, people with a good attitude can join our group anytime, unlike some of the others here. Your group? I'm Cuisto, and this is Lavaroon. People usually call us the Bombshell Bros, but don't worry, we're not playing with bombs or anything. It's just that our information is always so explosive, and we blow minds on the regular. So, you two really like to gossip? You sure know how to embellish. No, no, you don't get it. Knowing intelligence will make things better for you here. For example, knowing who's working with whom, who has the latest rumors, who's not getting along, wouldn't you like to know all that? 
Whoa, all this info's worth something, you know? You should prove you're worthy of it. I don't mind him. Quisto's always this way. Just play nice and say something to massage his ego. The welfare meals. Talk about the welfare meals. Oh, right, right. That meal we had yesterday was super delicious. Paimon can still taste it whenever she closes her eyes. Is that so? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I've been helping out with making those welfare meals. I've been working as a kitchen assistant for about a month and a half now. Oh, so you're the one who made those delicious steaks. Amazing. You could be a professional chef. You are correct. I am a true professional. In fact, I even went to culinary school. But enough about that. Since you like my cooking, I guess that means we share similar tastes. Listen carefully. This little bombshell will help you learn what's really going on here in the fortress. Listen, kids. The power structure within the fortress is quite complicated. The overworlders couldn't care less about us down here. We're basically dogs to them. You've already met the one person here you should never cross, the Duke, Risley. He knows more than you think. And if he doesn't care about something, then he often doesn't bother dealing with it. Those who have the Duke's attention get all kinds of special perks, even better treatment in the infirmary. I know who you mean. It's that jury or character, right? I don't think there's anything useful about him at all. Why does he visit the infirmary practically every day? Is it normal for anyone to be going in and out of there so often? If you ask me, he's just faking it to get out of work. But did you know that Churia was a talented researcher from the Fontaine Research Institute before he came here? There's no denying that. I don't care if he was a researcher that could turn dirt into Mora. Once you're in the fortress of Meripede, you're just another inmate like everybody else. Speaking of which, the last time I saw him, he was passing by in the corridor with Lorvine. I also heard they started arguing in the library and got into a fight, right? Guess that's just how terrible of a guy he is. You mean he hit a woman? Wow, I never imagined he was that bad. But that Lorvine's also quite the odd one, you know? She's always gabbing away, got into a fight with a man, and she also got sent to the infirmary. Come to think of it. I always see her going to the sick bay every couple of days, too. Huh. Wait a second. You don't think. Do you think it could it be that they're secretly meeting there to go on dates? Ah, but it's really hard to imagine. <laughs> After all, I do remember seeing Lorvine beat Jerry to a pulp that one time. And we might be overthinking things. Hey, you over there? Yeah, you. Say, do you like playing card games? You know, like Genius Invocation TCG? You TCG players are like mint in the wild, literally sprouting up everywhere. Hey, come on now. What's wrong with finding fellow invocation aficionados? Anyway, care to join me for a game? Ah, uh, all right. No pressure. But why would you be looking for people to play Genius Invocation in a place like this? Don't people usually come here to fight? <laughs> Whether you're throwing down cards or throwing punches, it's all a competition, isn't it? It's all the same in my eyes. There are lots of card players here in the fortress. When I saw you, I immediately thought, hey, even outsiders from other nations play cards. So I came over to say hi. Sure. Great! Since you've been here longer than us, you need to flex your seniority a little bit, right? Maybe you could start by telling us newcomers some stories about this place. <laughs> I've 
thought you would have already heard everything by now. All right, then. Did you have anything specific in mind? Or do you want me to just pick a topic? Why don't you pick? We'll let you know if we've heard it already. All right. Have you heard any strange rumors since you've arrived? Then, did you know that there are some people who are always gossiping over in the corner? Yeah, so you've already met those two. <laughs> They're quite a pair. They always keep an eye out for the latest happenings and gossip about everything. I've never seen anyone with more time on their hands. I heard that they used to be a chef and a bartender before they were sent down here. You know how bartenders are, always chatting with customers. And chefs love to pass the time just hanging out when they're not cooking. Hmm, good to know. Do you have anything else to tell us? Hmm, let me think. Sounds like you want to hear something a little more tantalizing. Oh, did you know that the Duke was also a convict in the Fortress of Meripede before? Huh? Wait, are you serious? That's right. The Duke was an inmate just like you and me. Seems he was exiled here for committing some crime. Who knows how he ended up rising up to become the warden, though. To go from an ordinary inmate to becoming the manager of the whole place? I'm not gonna lie, I kind of respect that. A forbidden zone? Hmm, sounds like something that someone just made up. I've never heard of that. Where did you hear about it? It's just a rumor we've been hearing, but no worries if you've never heard of it. Do you have anything else you can tell us? Anything else? Hmm, not that I can think of. But I'll be sure to tell you anything interesting I hear next time. You'll have to play a game of Genius Invocation with me first, though. Okay, we've talked to just about everyone, and it's about time for us to go meet Linny. According to the card he left us, we should go meet him in the production zone. As expected of the legendary duo, you have my full and undivided attention. Huh. I'd have never guessed that myself. The rumors swirling about this place are unreliable after all, and Master Child probably went missing because he found a way out. He is a harbinger after all. I suppose he's much more resourceful than I initially gave him credit for. Unfortunately, this isn't enough for our final report to Father. We need to find out Master Child's exact whereabouts. Father told me that even though Master Child said he was just coming to Fontaine for a vacation, he actually had some personal reasons. His agenda might be linked to his disappearance. His escape route is already flooded, so we'll have to test someone with professional diving skills to chase after him. Well, when you put it that way, it's obvious that only Fremenet would be up to the task. Bingo! Is he around? He's working today. Coming here as a group would have attracted too much attention. I'll talk to him about it later. It's the least I can do. We're all in this together, so it's only fair for us to fulfill our end of the bargain. Honestly, I'm far more impressed by you guys managing to collect all this information right under Risley's watchful eyes. <laughs> Collecting information has always been our strong point. Now, let me think. To find out more information, Fremenet will have to retrace Master Child's original route. And if he's to do that, he'll have to set out on the next pipe cleaning day at the earliest. That's six days from now. Hmm. And after that, he'll probably take another two or three days to return. You can even estimate how long it'll take for him to get back? We've been working together for a long time. We know each other's capabilities like the backs of our hands. Traveler, what say you to meeting here nine days from now? We'll be able to pick up Fremenet while we're at it, too. 
Oh, and there's just one last thing we'd like your help with. Though we can just sit back and wait for Fremenet's report on Master Child's whereabouts, we still need to make more progress on the investigation of the Forbidden Zone. Fremenet's no master of disguise, Lynette's still working on getting intel from the other areas, and I'll need to spend some time helping Fremenet prepare for his diving mission. So, you are the only ones we can count on. What do you want us to do? Will it be hard? Well, I won't call it easy per se, but I think you'll be able to pull it off. Listen carefully. You'll need to find an excuse to get into the infirmary and investigate the room and environs. You've mentioned several sketchy looking people always meeting at the infirmary earlier, so it probably has something to do with the secret we're hoping to uncover. You've already met the head nurse, so she'll be less suspicious of you. Investigate the internal structure of the infirmary and any active dealings within, and pass those on to me alongside anything else you're able to discover. But also, there's no need to take risks. Don't forget, safety always comes first. Ah, uh, my apologies. I just started rambling out of habit. <sighs> it was almost as if I was talking to my younger sister. But that's not a bad thing, right? Then we'll head out as soon as we finish our prep. Let's go our separate ways for now then. Don't forget, we meet here again in nine days. Stay safe.
Does this hurt? Oh! Hmm. I understand. So that's what it is. I think you just ate something that disagreed with you. That's all. Nothing too serious. Huh. Outside of a pretty bad stomach ache when it decides to act up. <sighs> so that's what it is. Thank goodness it's not anything more serious. Mm hmm. <sighs> and there have been other inmates complaining about the food recently. I'll inform our head chef, Mr. Wolsey, of this problem as soon as possible. Congratulations! The health risk is incredibly low, so you should recover within a couple days. Why don't you take a rest here while I go get some medicine for you? Miss Lavine, I'll have to trouble you to help me look after this new patient while I'm gone. Very well. Ah, and she hopped away just like that. Hello. So how are you feeling now? Her stomach aches really bad. She was stumbling about the whole way here, so Paimon's really worried. If Miss Sijuin says it's not a serious problem, then there's no need to worry. She's the best medic we've got down here. She's the only medic you've got down here. Ah, uh, well, that's true. What do you mean, that's true? That's really misrepresenting the situation. Of course I can't speak for the whole fortress, but it's not like everyone in prison here is useless, you know? Though they may have committed crimes and gotten locked up here as a result, they still know a thing or two about medicine, and they help Miss Sishuin take care of the sick and injured. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But did you have to lecture me about it in front of another patient? Aren't you a patient, too? Where did all your energy come from? Uh... Huh, that's correct. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. Are you two also sick? We've been sick a while. I come back every once in a while for checkups and to pick up the medicines Miss Sijuin prescribes for us. That's just the nature of chronic illnesses. As for her, <laughs> you could say she fancies herself as Miss Sijuin's capable helper because she learned a bit of medical knowledge ages ago. Please watch your mouth, Mr. Jurier. Don't forget that you are the primary reason I have frequent heart palpitations. Hey, don't start arguing now, please. Keep it civil at least. Release. It's way too early for us to even think about that. And who the heck knows if we'd even be able to continue our previous lives? Please allow me to end this boring and useless conversation. Oh, and Mr. Jurier, I don't want to see your face here again anytime soon. And same to you, Miss Lorvine. Anyway, that was more than enough rest for me, so I'm going to get out of this excessively noisy place. See you later, everyone. He just slowly walked off? Like that? Hmph. <laughs> That's just what he's like. I'm sorry you had to see all of that. I'm Lorvine. And that's... Well, his name is Jurier, but I hope you'll never have cause to remember his name. You really can't stand him, huh? I mean, can you blame me? Who would like someone who's as arrogant and obsessed with weird research topics as he is? <clears throat> but there's no need to keep dwelling on him. I... I'll accompany
accompany you two for a while. Miss Seashween should be back soon, and I'm sure you'll feel better as soon as you've had some of her medicine. No, no. It's nothing. I'm back! Did you rest like you promised? Thank you for getting our medicine, Miss Seashween. Did you all cooperate with your bed rest? I trust that nobody got up to walk around. <sighs> Good. Here, this should be two days' worth of medicine for you. Take one pill now, and then continue your bed rest. Ah, uh, Miss Lavine, I left in a bit of a hurry just now. Do you still remember if we discussed the color of the pill that you should be taking today? <sighs> I remember. You said it should be yellow. Yellow, huh? I understand. These are yours. Please, make sure to go to bed early after taking them tonight. You'll benefit from a good night's sleep. Alright, then I'll also be on my way now. I hope you feel better soon, too. See ya! I'm going to fill out your medical record now. You're widely known as the Traveler, right? I just want to double-check a few details, if that's all right with you. Those two made quite the commotion just now, so why don't we let the Traveler rest? Paimon can answer the questions instead! Mm-hmm. So her primary symptoms are abdominal pain, with secondary symptoms of nausea. Is there anything else? Hmm. That's it! All right, then. Is there anything we should know besides to take the meds? No, her base constitution is quite good, so I'm sure she'll recover quite quickly after taking the medicine. Please, make sure to stick to bland or less stimulating foods, and don't stay up too late at night. Got it! Paimon will hold the Traveler to that for sure! Oh, you're going to take a nap already? Okay then, you get some rest. We've been to lots of places together. She may look a bit under the weather now, but she's actually super strong. Oh, so you're the best of companions. Well, don't worry, she'll recover soon. Ah, you're awake. How do you feel? You slept for a really long time, but we never left. Now you can go back without a worry in the world. Remember to take your meds regularly. And remember, bland foods! Mm-hmm! Thank you, Miss Sejuine! <laughs> you really are something! To be able to fall asleep like that and even sleep talk the entire time, you scared Paimon half to death! No, but you kept mumbling things along the lines of, Chiron, go take my grilled fish and put down the Adeptus Temptation now! Paimon talked with Sejuine the entire time you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary?
Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremenay successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremenay's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Hmm, perhaps that's true. You are both very good people, and we've come to appreciate that more than anyone else. Unfortunately, there's still one thing that could get between us, lest you've forgotten. The matter of our respective loyalties. You've mentioned before that you've had some run-ins with the Fatui. I can understand that feeling, so I assume you're just helping us out of the kindness of your hearts? Well, everyone could use some more friends! We'll be counting on you to help us in the future, too! Mm-hmm. Since I see you as friends, then it's even more important for us to protect you from any peril. Fremenet and Lynette feel the same way. Glad to hear it. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremenet returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's...